System flowcharts explained, illustrating the relationship between the elements that make up a system. Now, a system flowchart is a tool used to visually represent the process and workflows within a system, using a variety of different symbols to provide a clear depiction of how data flows from one component of a system to another. So the key area here is there are symbols and there are lots of symbols, probably the most symbols in a diagram that you'll see throughout this computing course. All right, and so a foundation here is understanding the different types of symbols that are used in a system flowchart for their different reasons. So let's start off by looking at the symbols. So the following symbols may be used to represent different elements of a symbol. It is important that you annotate these symbols and you actually say what they are in the context of the system you are trying to illustrate, okay, and show what they're actually representing within that diagram. So in order to help you understand the symbols of a system flowchart, I'm going to try to break them up into subcategories. And the first subcategory I'll look at is input process output. Okay, when things either go in, they're processed, or a display is given back to a user. All right, so let's start off with these symbols here. So firstly, for an online input, which usually means that a user is connecting to a network, okay, and then it's being uh, entered in through their device into the actual system, okay, we use this online input here, okay, where data is digitally entered into a system, such as by using an online form. For processing, we have a rectangle, and you might see that as being familiar to when you do a regular flow chart. Okay, it is a rectangle, it's a process, and it's used to show when an action is applied to data within a system, such as a calculation or an update to information. And then for output, we've got a symbol here for online display. Once again, meaning that we're connected to a network system. So when a system presents information to a user, okay, so back to a user, such as through a node screen. And we're being very careful with our terminology by saying node, because a node is a device that's connected to the network. So the node might be the user's tablet device, their laptop, their phone, but it's actually connected to the system. Again, displaying the information back through the monitor of the device they're looking at. So they your basic and probably most familiar types of symbols you might be able to use for input process output. The next category of symbols we'll look at is for storage and retrieval. All right, and how data may be stored in different ways. So firstly, we'll take a look at this cylinder uh, shape, which represents direct access storage, which is a location where data is stored for later processing, such as in a database. So data may be stored there, and when we say later processing, it means it can be retrieved from there for future processing and future use by users. The symbol after that is cloud storage, okay, and actually making use of a cloud. So when data is stored, on or retrieved from an online storage location or server. Okay, now this could be used in conjunction with the internet, and if it is so, then we're going to use it with a number symbol we're going to look at just a little bit later. All right, but obviously this represents cloud storage, okay, when data is stored on a network and retrieved, okay, for use uh, by systems on a network. And then the final one makes use of what is technically an obsolete technology, magnetic tape. Okay, we don't use magnetic tape much anymore, but there are some operations that we still represent using the magnetic tape symbol because they used to be done with magnetic tape in the past. Okay, so data storage traditionally used uh, using magnetic tape, such as for backupping data or archiving data. All right, so when you're saving data to an external location for one of these processes, you will use the magnetic tape symbol, okay? And obviously back up a process that if the system goes down, we get that back up so we can restore the system there. All right, so they were our storage and retrieval symbols. The final category of symbols we'll look at relate to physical or external. Now, I'm kind of making up these categories too, trying to make it more simplified for you as well, okay? So these are operations where people need to physically do things or it produces a physical output, okay? And it's things that aren't necessarily within the network system. We're kind of going outside the technology of the system. So this one's a bit broad, obviously. So I'm just trying to group these three together too, just so you can put a bit of a label on them as well. So the first one is a paper document. Paper documents used in conjunction with a system, such as the printing off of a receipt as proof that a transaction took place. The paper document is printed off so that a person can then take that receipt and they have a proof that that event took place. The next symbol is that of a manual operation, when a human needs to perform an action as a part of a system. So a participant, as we would say, has to conduct a manual operation. And this could be scanning an item 
okay so that it can go into the system okay so that data can go through a certain physical operation conducted by human needs to take place so that the event can occur and then the final symbol we'll look at is actually a connector we haven't spoken much about connectors in these diagrams yet okay but this is a telecommunications link when a connection is made to an online network such as the internet all these symbols are connected by just straight line arrows, okay, with arrow heads that show the flow of data within the system. But this telecommunications link shows that when data is making use of the internet to move between two different locations. Now, this would be when a process is making a connection to a cloud server, there would likely be this telecommunications link between connecting those two symbols. So this is just the introduction to what all these nine different symbols mean when they are represented in a systems flowchart. But let's try to show how they could be used. So the following diagram illustrates the use of system flowchart symbols for the processes of collecting, displaying, and storage. Very basic processes. And this isn't a real world system I'm gonna illustrate here. This is just showing how the symbols could be used. I'll make future videos on actual scenarios using these symbols, but I'm still just trying to get that logic into your head on how these symbols may be used. So let's take a look at it in the context of these three processes here. So firstly is that of collection. Now collection itself is a process. Okay, so data may be obtained through Firstly, an online input. Uh, they connect to their device that is connected to a network and they enter data into an online form and that data then goes into the system for the process of collecting. Another way data may be collected is through a manual operation. As said, we can actually have a participant scanning items that go into a system collecting that data too. So those two symbols may be used for the process of collecting data. Once data is collected, it will likely be displayed by a system. So that is our next process we'll look at, the displaying of data. Now, we need to make note of arrowheads at this point. As you can see, when we're collecting data, we're putting data into the system, and the arrowheads show that. With displaying, the system's now displaying that data back to users for them to see. How may they be done? Well, firstly, data might be displayed through, it prints off a receipt. It scanned all those items, it collected that data, a receipt is printed off by the system. Now. There would probably be more sub processes in there to get to that point, but for just so we're understanding the logic of displaying, that data is coming out of the displaying process and then being put into a format that it can be displayed to a potential user or customer. Another way data could be displayed is through use of on screen. Okay, as said, on screen of their node could be a terminal that is on the network, it could be on their mobile phone, but through the online display symbol. So data comes out of the display process so that it can be displayed through a monitor or screen to a user or customer. All right, so that's collecting, that's displaying. And then we said the other process we'll look at is that of storing data. So if data is being stored by the system, as said, we're just mainly showing the logic of these symbols being used. Okay, it could, it, as we try to illustrate more complex systems, okay, we will have a few more processes and things in place here. And this sequence doesn't necessarily work this perfectly. We're looking at a very basic example here, just so you can understand the logic of these symbols. But for storing, we know that there are three symbols affiliated with it. Firstly, we have the network server. And here I'm actually highlighting too the use of my arrowheads on both ends of my line now because storage is a process of storing and retrieval. Okay, data is stored to the server and into that database, but it's also retrieved from later processing as well. So I've got a double headed arrow there to represent that. The other process we could have for storage is of making a backup to an external hard drive. Now, I've gone back to the one arrow ahead this time because it's not necessarily we're going to retrieve that data unless there's kind of a system breakdown and we need to restore that. Okay, but that wouldn't be a part of the system's daily operation. So I've just got the data being stored onto the magnetic tape for a backup in one direction. And then our other storage method is that of our cloud storage. And as we mentioned, Cloud storage makes use of the internet, which involves a telecommunications link. Hence, while we've got that Z line there, I've got two arrowheads on that Z line to represent that data is being stored on the online storage, but also being retrieved from the online storage as well. Okay, so we're illustrating that with our arrowheads in conjunction with the use of these symbols. So I hope this has given you a bit of an idea about how our basic processes can work in conjunction with the different symbols of a systems flowchart. One thing to illustrate too, because as we said, it's a bit more dynamic than what I've shown here with just three simple processes and the affiliated symbols, because it doesn't really show the logic of our data is flowing between those symbols there too. But it could be that in order to display data, 
data could also be coming from the direct access storage and being sent back to the direct access storage too, based on user input as well. So it is a bit more dynamic. It's not always just straightforward. It does flow all kind of over the place in order to show the logic of that symbol. But look, I hope this video is giving an understanding of these nine symbols that are used in system flowcharts. Essentially that we've got a variety of symbols and if we can categorize those symbols into subcategories, it can make them easier for you to remember. Knowing our input process output symbols, case symbols for putting data into a system the symbol for processing data and the symbol for showing displaying data back to users okay that is our one category then our second category of storage symbols okay for direct access storage for cloud storage and magnetic tape and then our symbols for when we're going external to the system or doing physical operations that of the, the manual operation the paper document and the telecommunications link if you can kind of put them in those subcategories it might make them easier for you to remember okay and then apply to scenarios when asked to develop system flow charts in examinations or project scenarios but look i hope this is giving you an understanding and a basic start to knowing how to create a system flow chart